Hello for everyone watching. I know you don't see my face on the screen yet, but this is Leila Mukhaber with Under USA. We are just taking a few moments to let the audience build before we start with today's presentation. We're so thrilled that you're here. Ramadan Kareem. We have some amazing culinary artists with us today. We have Leila Al Haddad, Marcel Efram, and Noor Saif. We want to know where you're tuned in from, so please use the comments to tell us. Please also get the conversation going around what your favorite Arabi food or Ramadan foods are. Uh, it's going to be an incredible demonstration of drinks, dips, and desserts. And we'll just be starting again in a few moments. So stay tuned, sit back and uh, be prepared to enjoy the show. If you are already to make, already ready to make a contribution, one thing that you should know is every donation that you make provides food assistance to Palestine refugee families in the Gaza Strip living under the poverty line. And if you do make a donation today during this hour, we will provide for you the digital recipes from our various chefs. So that is an incentive, not just to do more for Palestine refugees in Gaza, but to also get your hands on some incredible food recipes that you're about to see in just a moment. Thank you again for your patience. Hello, everyone, and welcome, Ramadan Kareem. I am Leila Mukhaber, Director of Communications for UNRWA USA, and I am your host this afternoon for this virtual gather for, gather for Gaza, excuse me, event in partnership with Mama's Palestinian Kitchen. We are still waiting for our co-host from Mama's Palestinian Kitchen to join. They were here, but I think we lost the connection. So we'll bring them back as soon as we get the opportunity. That is our friend Abbas. We are so grateful to have the opportunity to broadcast today, both via UNRWA USA's channel, as well as Mama's Palestinian Kitchen. We want to know where you're tuned in from, so please use the chat to do that. It's so important that we're here with all of you today because there is a situation that is crucial for you to be aware of. In the Gaza Strip, where 2 million people live, more than 70% are refugees. And of that population, 1 million people are living uh, with food insecurity, which means they don't have economic access to food. This is a group um, of foodies that is watching, so we know that you understand the importance and also enjoy food. We want you to be thinking about this community throughout this afternoon as you are introduced some, to some creative um, drinks, dips, and desserts, and make donations as generously as you can to provide for these people. Underway USA is a nonprofit that supports the UN Agency for Palestine Refugees, and today's program is completely dedicated to food assistance for that population. So I'm really glad to have this platform to kind of give you more um, of an understanding of that situation. Just for a brief bit of history, um, during the Trump administration, UNRWA's work, which was um, previously supported um, by the United States government was defunded. The United States government was the number one supporter since the time of President Truman. And just recently, the Biden administration did re-engage the agency, but only at a partial amount, about 41% of the historic contributions. So the needs of the people in Gaza are tremendous and we cannot forget them. It is important for the American community and anyone watching today to be able to be generous and give it's also important to know that any donation that you make is Zakat eligible. So we hope that you are as generous as possible. I'd like to bring on screen with me my colleague, Hani Edmontoun, to tell us more. Hani, welcome. Hi, Laila. How are you? I'm okay. How are you doing? Great. Greetings from Annandale, Virginia. We're excited for this event and filled with gratitude for the people who are watching, the people who are going to cook for us, and the people who are going to inspire us today. Obviously, it's April, and April is. April is for Arab food. 
Yeah, very quickly. I'm, I'm honored to be with all of you here. My quick thing is, you know, we have made it a lot easier for you to make your donation. You know, this is about food assistance and all of you know that food is culture, food is love, food, food is solidarity. And UNRWA does have a very strong program, no one to the scale of the, the food assistance that UNRWA can provide. And because of your generosity in this uh, Ramadan, obviously zakat is a big deal, charity for solidarity. We wanna, we wanna get your donation to take it and put it to work for the food program, the food assistance. I was lucky enough to be in Gaza just the last three, uh, three months ago and I'm telling you the impact that the food bundles uh, and food parcels distributed by UNRWA because of your generosity is huge. Families get excited. You know, food is food is security, right? People want to have a meal and be, you know, food is dignity. And we want to do more of that, and especially we're taking the opportunity of the month of Ramadan. And you know your generosity. There is a number of links you will see in the chat. You could give in our Facebook fundraiser. There is actually a designated page where you can give for this event. Our goal is modest, fifteen thousand dollars. And you know it adds up five dollars, twenty dollars, fifty, a hundred, and we want to make sure we put your money to work. And we're we're just gonna enjoy the show in a minute and be delighted to be there with you. I'll be back in a few minutes to give you an update. I see right now there's a hundred dollar donation going, so please keep it going. And you know we may have a match by the end of the day for up to five thousand dollars. So if you your generosity will be matched and you know will be generously appreciated. Your your kindness would not go unnoticed, so I'll give it back to my colleague uh, Layla to start off this amazing show. And thank you again. Thank you, Hanny, so much. I see now that we have Abbas here from Mama's Palestinian Kitchen. Abbas, welcome, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Sorry about that. I was having some technical issues. No worries. That happens and it's totally cool. And, you know, we're all still even a year and a half into the pandemic navigating the virtual space. So we're so glad that you made the time to be with us, that you're giving us this platform. Abbas, can you just tell us for a moment a little bit more about Mama's Palestinian Kitchen before we bring our chefs up on screen and maybe why you decided to partner with us? Absolutely, Layla. Absolutely. Um, well, for, first of all, I have a lot of respect for UNRWA. Um, it is an organization that's definitely needed and appreciated um, in particular for Palestinian refugees um, and, and all the help that they do. Um, about Mama's Palestinian Kitchen, I think nobody could have uh, predicted that we would grow um, explosively. Um, it, it is something that we, we ventured out and tried out uh, like a fun group, you know, Palestinians getting together, especially now because of the pandemic and everything going on. So it gave us a platform. It gave Palestinians worldwide and their supporters, of course, um, a platform to come together, to share the food, to, to keep our ethnic dishes alive. Um, you know, uh, the, the genuine and traditional dishes that we'll see here also. Um, so the page really grew tremendously and we basically want to put it into good use. I mean, what, it would have no point if we just share dishes um, without actually doing something where we can be effective on the ground. So I think a fundraiser like today, you know, gathering for Gaza is, is something that we could put the page to good use. And we would like to continue that, um, you know, down the road where we can actually use this platform and, and see the fruits, you know, of, of this page where we can help people on the ground and um, hopefully, you know, the beginning of many projects. And, and we're so glad that uh, you guys reached out to us and uh, partner up for this uh, great event today. Thank you, Abbas, perfectly said. And we're so, so grateful um, for all that are tuning in right now, both from Mama's Palestinian Kitchen and from the UNRWA USA community. I see that we have people from Valencia, Spain, Kensington, Maryland, outside of Chicago, Montreal, Canada, Portland, Oregon. We have people from Centerville, Virginia, Clinton, Maryland, Columbus, Ohio, Dallas, Texas. I mean, so many communities are being represented right now. And so I don't want to delay this any further. You're going to hear more from both me and Abbas later in the show, as well as Hanny. But I would love to bring now to the stage everyone's favorite Gaza mom. She's known for having famously toured Anthony Bourdain, a little hamu around Gaza. And she's going to show us a variety of really cool Ramadan inspired drinks. So Abbas, let's tune it, turn it over to Layla. Layla, take it away. 
Hi, other Leila. Hi, everyone. I'm so excited to be here. Hi, Abbas. Although I will say this is kind of torture to do while you're fasting. So, so you'll forgive me. I tried my best to, to test things out in the, in the mad rush after I've thought. But, but I, I'm hoping to share some really cool and fun, um, you know, drinks with you. A couple of them that I, um, one of them that I uh, created jointly with Reem Asid for a program we had last year. And another one that, um, you know, we had another program in D.C., so, um, you know, generally speaking, in Ramadan, for those of you who fast might know, um, it's traditional in the Arab world to break your fast on some kind of like really sickeningly sweet drink because you're, you know, you've been fasting all day from both drink and food and, and you need that like sugar rush, right? So traditionally drinks like jalab, which is a, you know, date molasses or in Karab and whatever, um, with nuts is served in, in you know, bled de sham the Levant. Um, you also have amaruddin, this like the apricot paste that's diluted with water and it, it's slightly sweetened. Um, so I kind of wanted to kick things up a notch and I have a couple that are sort of Ramadani inspired and a couple that are Palestinian inspired. So I'm going to start with like three different takes on lemonade. And um, those of you, many of you probably know that um, le, le, lemonade banana is a very popular drink in the summer, right? Lem mint lemonade. Um, and I know my mom used to make this all the time. She would actually peel like small lemon limes and um, like macerate them, crush them with sugar and let them kind of sit for half an hour and then strain that lemon juice mixture with the sugar um, and then put orange blossom water, which for those of you who aren't familiar can be purchased in any Middle Eastern market. And we usually, you know, spike the simple syrups with this, which is it's fantastic to have around. So. I, that's the very basic one. Many of you may know that, but I'm going to show it to you really quick in case you don't. I'm not going to do the, the laborious version that my mother makes, but I just have some really nice mint here from my garden. And I'm just going to actually, you know, there's several ways to do this. Sometimes people traditionally put it in a mixer. I actually don't like to do that because I find that like you get even the best mixers like Vitamixes, you still get a weird kind of, you know, overly grassy minty like pieces floating around. So I actually like to put the mint in a, I'm just using mason jars here. And then, um, sorry, forgive me, I forgot my little. And then um, actually um, muddle them. You could put a little sugar. I'm gonna use some uh, simple syrup that I already have prepared here. Just one part sugar to one part water, boil it for 10 minutes, boom, simple syrup. And then I already flavored mine with orange blossom water because I use it also for, for desserts, but it's great for drinks. And the reason that I prefer to use simple syrup in drinks rather than sugar, especially in lemonade, because um, I always get asked this question, is because the sugar doesn't always dissolve. So it's you're better off using simple syrup. So I'm just gonna put in like, you know, um, you know, I can't taste here. So I'm just putting in, I wanna say like half an ounce, two tablespoons of the simple syrup with the, with the nana. And then I just gonna muddle it, right? And that just gets all the nice flavors from the mint, the essential oils out. Um, and then once that's done, I'm just gonna add the juice of one lemon really quickly, because I know I want to show you a bunch of other quick spins on this. And, um, you know, I know they have the real lemon, but honestly, if you're going, and it's, you know, unfortunate that we don't, we don't, I don't, at least I'm not in California, I live in a place where I have, you know, an abundant amount of lemon. So they can be pricey, but honestly, it's really worth it to use the fresh lemons, you know, but I won't lie, like in a pinch when lemons are, are you know, sparse, I, I sometimes use the real lemon. So don't feel like you can't do that. Um, I'm just going to add the lemon juice here. Uh, and then finally the water. So I didn't add, you see, this goes a long way. Um, fill the water to about half the jar. Excuse me, I don't have the water ready here. Um, so I just put about half of my jar of water and the rest is gonna be ice. And I'm not gonna fill the entire thing because I, I don't want everything to melt since no one's gonna be drinking this. But that's basically, and remember, and then the orange blossom water, right? But I already added that in. If you, if you didn't and you just have plain simple syrup, you want to add a cap full of the orange blossom water and it, you know, already smells amazing. It looks amazing because you have the little mint leaves floating there. So this is like the classic mint lemonade, right? And this is great in Ramadan too. Really refreshing. I'm a big fan of lemonade. So now we're going to take that same recipe and we're going to kind of um, mix things up a little. This one um, I like to call sort of the Palestinian take on mint lemonade, but it's actually um, Lemonada bin Muramiya. So it's a sage lemonade. And, and as you know, uh, sage, dried sage, this is one of my favorite ones that we can get in the U.S., it's the Al Ard brand, um, is, is very popular in Palestine, both for medicinal purposes, uh, you know, Maramiya is, is named after, it's Mariamiya, after 
Mary or Maryam, and it was said that she prescribed it to people who had stomach pains and so forth. So it's used medicinally, but we also put it, of course, in with black tea, right? As everyone knows, classic Palestinian tea with sage. So um, I have some lovely also fresh sage in my garden. So actually for this, instead of muddling it, and you can, but because sage is harder to come by, what I did is I created a maramiya iced tea, just an infusion of, a strong infusion of the, of the dried sage by itself, and I chilled it. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of that. Um, there's an ant in my in my cup, but anyway, I'll, I'll leave the ant for, for now. So I'm gonna add a little bit of that. And it's very strong and bitter. And that's why I actually like it in this because I like bitter and sour notes in my drinks. I don't like really overly sweet things. So I, I put about, you know, um, you know, a little bit there in the bottom of the cup, as you can see. Same thing, we're gonna add that simple syrup to it. Um, you know, half an ounce or as sweet as you like it, a couple of tablespoons there. And if you don't, add a cap full of the orange blossom if you didn't already. Uh, and then again, we're gonna add the um, another lemon, right? And I'm gonna quickly just squeeze that lemon. And I do have, oh, you're fasting too. Two, two of my daughters are now in the background, so I can have the younger one taste test for me. Okay, so then just go ahead and add the juice of one lemon in there. And it's not something you usually think of, right? The sage with the lemonade, but I love how they balance each other out. Add some of that water again to about half of the mason jar and then some more ice. And and um, I think when I did this is you can also add some, um, if you wanna make this, I think when I last did this, if I'm not mistaken, I added some club soda, right? So any sparkling water, but I kind of like to make it a little fizzy. And uh, finally, I'm gonna garnish it with the fresh sage because I really like to have that pop of color in there. And you can always add a lemon rind if you don't wanna waste it because that'll give it some of the nice flavors as well. So that's the sage lemonade, the Lemonal da Villa Maramilla. And again, this has become one of my favorites because it's like different than the classic. I love those kind of, um, you know, really earthy notes from the Maramilla. It gives a, it's a little bit of that, that bitter notes as well. Um, and it's not super sweet. And the final one I'm gonna do, take on lemonade. And then I'm gonna finally go to the last one. I wanna make sure that, okay, someone is saying I'm gonna definitely go try this. Yes, I love this. And again, you could try to muddle the sage, but you know, or you could try, you know, some people do a sage simple syrup, but I do wanna say one note on that. If you actually boil sage leaves, or my mother used to always say, um, you lose like the essential oils or something happens to it where, where I don't know if it becomes harmful, but it becomes overly bitter. So you never boil sage leaves. You always just infuse them in hot water, which is why I didn't make a sage simple syrup and I used the sage iced tea instead. So the final one that I'm gonna do, uh, the final one that I'm gonna do is actually in, in, inspired by a medieval um, Islamic cookbook in which they had a take on a pomegranate lemonade. Um, and it was also, um, um, this was something that uh, I did an event on Levantine cuisine in Georgetown last year. Um, and one of the uh, people involved um, ha was, you know, helped create this recipe and I loved it. Um, but it, the original one was from a medieval Islamic cookbook. So basically what we're gonna do is, um, uh, get another jar, because I'm realizing I ran out of jars here, um, is we're gonna take pomegranate molasses, and if you don't have that, again, it can be found nowadays, in, I wanna say in any supermarket, but in Middle Eastern stores, and it's basically just the concentrated juice of pomegranate, and traditionally it was made with sour pomegranates, not with the sweet pomegranates. So again, it is kind of tart, it's not overly sweet, which I love in drinks, right? And you're just gonna put a little drizzle of that on the bottom, and then, um, Oops, excuse me. Um, and then we're gonna add the one more lemon to that. And this is kind of a fun one because traditionally they would actually put vinegar. And even I think in during colonial times, they would make shrubs and things, non-alcoholic drinks with vinegar. So this has a little splash of apple cider vinegar. So we, we added the pomegranate molasses. We have the um, juice of one lemon here. And you can also just start off with a good lemonade if you have it. A little bit of the simple syrup that I had already made before with the orange blossom water. And then finally we have a splash of, I have some nice um, um, organic apple cider vinegar here. Just a little bit goes a long way. And it sounds weird to put vinegar in a drink, but trust me, it actually really balances out nicely. 
And then finally, um, we're going to put water and a little, or you could just do it with club soda. So I think for this one, I'm going to do it with the um, club soda. And again, this sounds very weird, but it's amazing. I remember when I first had this, I just kept drinking it over and over again. Because I was like, wow, this is a lot of nice flavors that you aren't accustomed to, you know? And just give it a nice little stir. And that is the pomegranate uh, molasses lemonade. And I made it fizzy there, so it's a little bit different than the other ones. So those are the three takes on the lemonade. I definitely hope you guys try them. I know I'm running out of time, so I'm going to show you one more really cool drink that we came up with last night, my son and I, and he was supposed to actually show it to you, but he, he got a little stage fright. So, or he says he's busy. I don't want to talk on his behalf. So this one is actually, you know, um, a take on a very traditional Ramadan drink that many of you might be familiar with, Amaruddin, right? And I don't know about you, I'm, I was never a huge fan growing up of Amaruddin. It was always like way too sweet and, and thick and, you know, but I'm like, man, I feel like it's, you know, what do you do? It's like, what a waste of a great Ramadan product. Like it shows up every year in these, in these foil packets or, or these you know, cellophane packets. And my kids just love to eat it like fruit roll-ups. Um, and we do make it into a pudding, like a halabiya. But yesterday I was thinking, how can you take two of my favorite Ramadan drinks, which are hibiscus, which many of you might be familiar with. This is just hibiscus karkade, right? So hibiscus flowers, um, you just make a herbal infusion out of it and I put it in the fridge. And it's also very popular in um, the African um, subcontinent where they add things, they boil it with ginger and pineapple and flavor it with different things like that. But I was thinking, how can I take these two things and make a drink out of them? And, um, and so my son and I came up with like sort of a riff on a Bellini. So it's like a uh, Amaruddin Bellini, of course, totally a version, no alcohol involved, we don't drink. Um, so basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna start by putting, and this is gonna be layered. So there's a little bit of a trick to it that I'm going to show you, but I'm going to move these little lemonades out of the way first. You're going to take the thing, whatever item you're using that has the most sugar. So in this case, I'm taking the simple syrup that had the uh, orange blossom flower already mixed in it. And I'm going to put a couple of tablespoons um, in the bottom of my uh, cup here. And, you know, again, depending on how sweet you want it. The apricot paste that I'm going to put next, I just put it in the blender with some water, I just submerged it in a Vitamix and I, and I mixed it. So you can see it's not as thick as it usually is. It's, it's more of like a mango. It's like a, it's an apricot puree, right? So you, the same way that you would have a peach puree, this is an apricot puree and it's mildly, lightly sweetened. So I'm gonna take this, this spoon and um, what I'm gonna do, and I hope this actually works, let's see. So you're gonna put the spoon like this in your cup, right? And you're, you see what I'm doing there is I, I inverted it and I'm gonna put, pour the apricot over it so that it falls down and creates a layer. I don't know if you guys can see or not. And I'm gonna fill about half the cup. I don't know if I did that or not. So I might just do that for now because I don't wanna waste the, so I just filled about half the cup and now this is the tricky part. I'm gonna take the um, hibiscus, I'm gonna just put it back in my pour right here, and I am going to do the same thing and hope this, that this works. Isn't this what he did? Okay, so my husband's looking at me in the background like, you know, I'm grimacing here. So you're basically gonna pour it over the spoon, the inverted spoon, so that it creates a layer. So here we go. Is it working, is it not? It is working. Okay. Moment of truth. So you can say, see this creates this really beautiful double layer. Triple, uh, triple. Triple, why, what's the triple? The oh yeah, right, I have the sugar syrup at the bottom, I forgot about that. Hey, okay. Layla, I'm hopping in because I'm just enamored by these drinks. They look oh, so yeah. gorgeous, <laughs> hi. This is my favorite and we're super excited and you're gonna end it with a spritz of lime. And according oh, no. to my son, if you just put little blobs of lime, they end up in little um bubbles. little bubbles right and so there's a there's a real art to it and then um and what finally last thing um you could put i didn't i forgot to bring some unfortunately but you could add some ginger ale to this because you know that'll give it another kind of dimension of flavor or just club soda or leave it like this but what i am going to do is i was going to garnish it with a little bit of some um sweet um flavoring salt that i had just because just again i like things with multiple 
layers and dimensions. So I'm just gonna sprinkle a little bit of that salt on top. And and there you go, folks. I don't know who's watching, but <laughs> you got a lot of people this watching right now. I absolutely love this one because you can see how pretty it looks there. I'm gonna come up here. Yeah, let's get and let me put you full on the screen so they can see it all the oh, way. Yeah, yeah. So you could see this is my favorite. And you could, you know, obviously you could mix it up, but you have the orange blossom water syrup in the bottom, the apricot, uh, the amaradine uh, in the middle puree, the apricot puree, and the hibiscus on top. And this just like combines all the best of the Ramadan flavors and drinks into one uh, glass, which I think is great because sometimes you want amaradine, sometimes you don't, you want the hibiscus. You just get everything in one cup here. So I love it. I tried this yesterday. And, and then again, the lime just balances out the sweetness because I really don't like the things that are sickeningly sweet. And so I'm just going to put everything here for you guys to see. Actually, can you lower it a little bit? So? And I know that I've run out of time. And then maybe Bayan can taste test one of them. Bayan, maybe you can do it. Which one? I want to try. Should I be a Yeah? Yeah? No? I think this is the cutest <laughs> Oh, I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. No, Come on, man. Doing it. Sorry, guys. But I guarantee, <laughs> but I, I guarantee you they're all really, really nice. And again, they're kind of like different. They're twists on your traditional drinks. And I really hope you try them and enjoy them. And thank you guys so much for having me. I will stick around to answer some questions. Please donate if you haven't already done so. You know, we're longtime supporters um, of Honor my husband and I who's standing here in the background <laughs> with me. Uh, and so please do all you can. I'm from Gaza, I go there frequently and I've seen the work that, you know, UNRWA um, does on the ground and how um, it impacts people. So every every little bit does make a difference. You see, do you wanna pop your head in? Thank you. Yes, Dr. Dawood, please show us your face. He's running away, I was trying to turn. <laughs> okay, well, if he doesn't wanna come on camera, we have had a wonderful demonstration right now with Layla and Bayan. Those drinks looked absolutely divine. We're so grateful that you didn't just show us one, you showed us many. And I want everyone who's watching to remember that if you donate, first of all, is Zakat eligible and it provides critical food assistance to refugees in Gaza. Layla has done her study herself with World, the World Food Program in Gaza and you can look up kind of the work around that and if you don't get the opportunity to meet her husband, you could look at our blog, The Voices of Unruh, where we profiled his incredible head. achievements. <laughs> Just why? I know you don't have to be. We have so many people watching from all around the world, and we're going to keep you around, Layla, for the Q&A, like you said. But for now, we are going to transition to the dips and sort of side version of today's presentation. So, Layla, please stick around. And next, we have with us Marcel. Chef Marcel coming to us from Alexandria, Virginia, representing Shababi Chicken. Marcel, take it away. Hi, everyone. Thank you, Layla. And Layla, that was really amazing and very informative. I can't wait to make some of those drinks at home. Uh, thank you for having me. I am the chef and co-owner of Shababi Palestinian Rotisserie Chicken, where we specialize in uh, the musakhan, a uh, very traditional style of uh, cooking it and with the rub, we do it as a whole chicken. We serve it with taboon. Um, the rest of the sides that kind of go along with it on our menu, I like to say kind of describe uh, my journey as a first generation American. Uh, my grandparents uh, were displaced in 48 uh, from Palestine. My mom was born in Beirut, my dad in Damascus, and then they came here back in the 70s. Uh, I was born a little bit after that, much more after that, actually. Um, but essentially, I like to say really everything that I do today is a passion project and is really rooted in my ancestors and where I come from and my family's journey and my journey here. So uh, what I'm going to be preparing for you is full madamas, um, but we're going to be doing it with fresh babas. Uh, it's almost uh, peak baba season. So this is very exciting. I love baba beans. Um, traditionally served for breakfast, you know, whether it's rehydrated dried babas or canned babas, uh, but what we're going to eat to be doing is kind of a riff on that with very similar ingredients and we'll be topping it with uh, a little bit of a watermelon salad. And I love to serve this with a side of like a kawi cheese and some pita bread. Um, it's great any time of the day. I finally remember having a fresh fava uh, full with my grandmother when I was younger. So like I said, a lot of these uh, dishes that I do today are in homage to my grandparents. So what I've done is we have these fresh babas that I had boiled uh, and they're still in the pots. And essentially we pick them or you pop them rather. So you boil them in 
hot water with some salt, and then they pop right out of the pots. Just like that. We're gonna start off with about two cups worth, and we're going to mash it. And I already started mashing a few of them. We just kind of do it in segments because it's a little harder to mash it all together. And we want this chunky. Don't be afraid to keep a few larger sizes of the uh, babas. I like the different textures in there. Uh, I'm a big texture eater. So I like the variations of textures, you know, with the foods. And then once we add the liquids, it'll help bind it. All right, so we'll just do the rest of that. And you can use the back of a fork or this works well as well. And like a masher. I know you probably can't see great, but this is kind of the texture that we're going for here. I'm gonna give it one final mash with the back of the fork. And if you're familiar with full, uh, obviously some people like it super spicy, other like a little more tame. I really like to use uh, long hot chilies and I small dice them. And when I personally eat it, I like to leave the seeds in because I like it a little spicy. Uh, if you prefer no, you know, less heat, you don't have to put the chilies in. Though I do recommend them and then you can just use kind of like the tip isn't as spicy as the top of the chili. I have one of those here. Find them. They should, you should be able to find it in your traditional grocer. All right, great. So this is about the texture that we want here. Show you that right there. All right, so I have some. Gorgeous, Marcel. Yeah. I just want to note that it's gorgeous. I know you can't see me, but I'm just I can't see taking you. it all in. <laughs> We're going to add a little bit of salt. And please don't forget to donate for like the full recipe, which you want. It's really fantastic. Cumin. And you could take liberties with this recipe as well. Sometimes I like to throw in a little bit of chili flakes if I want it extra spicy. I have a little bit of uh, minced garlic here. Just one clove. I have those long hots that I just diced up really small. I'm gonna put that right in there. I'm gonna take some lemon juice and olive oil. Then I'm just gonna mix that up. And you can actually do this ahead of time. It holds well for at least 24, 48 hours. It depends on how much you cook the favas. Now that's everybody's liking. If you like a little bit more mash, cook them a little bit longer. It's probably not gonna stay as long. Okay. That's all mixed up right there. And now this really fun salad, of course, uh, you know, very popular. And as a kid growing up, um, eating watermelon and cheese, like a, one of my most favorite things. I don't actually put the cheese in the salad just because it'll kind of break down. Though, if I wasn't putting it over the full, you can always add cheese to this recipe and it works out fantastic. Uh, so I have some diced watermelon right here. And as Layla said uh, in her segment, you know, the like pomegranate molasses brings a really great sense of acidity and sourness. I think there's a misconception that it's actually a sweetener, which it, it can do. Of course, it does have sweetness to it, especially the stuff that you find here in the States. Though I like to use it for kind of the complexities of acid and bitterness. I always say that there's like this misconception, especially for a lot of us in the culinary world, when we're trained, we're trained really with the Western perspective of like the French and Italian cuisines where everything that is acidic or bitter is broken down with fat. But of course, that's not how we eat at home. You know, most of our dishes, like there is a lot of acidity. There is a lot of bitterness. And though we want balance, we don't have to completely break it down. Um, and there's no shame in that. So we're just going to put some pomegranate and molasses in there. All 
we're trying to reclaim that. The complexities of flavors are allowed to be what they are. Uh, lemon juice, there's no, never too much lemon, in my opinion. We're gonna add a little bit of salt to it. Now, if you're not going to eat this salad right away, and you want to make these components ahead of time, just keep them separate before you top it because the watermelon will leach out over the over the pool. I have a little bit of nigella seeds, which have many names. They're known as black cumin, onion seeds. Essentially, they're from the nigella sativa plant and they have like an oniony complexity to them. I really like putting them in almost like anything that I do with watermelon because people are like, are those watermelon seeds? No, they're not. It's kind of a fun play on it. I'm going to put a little bit in the salad. I'm going to hit it with a little bit of olive oil. We're actually going to top it with all of that stuff as well. Once we plate it, here's our watermelon. You can see that. So get my fun bowl here. gonna leave kind of like a well in the center and of course there's tons of ways you can do this if you want this more mashed and you have a food processor at home you're more than welcome to do that there's really no wrong way to do this I think textually for me especially if I'm eating this for breakfast I do like the bigger chunks of the fava's okay and then I got my watermelon here I do this with a slotted spoon and then I go back around with the juices that are in there and top it off. Right in the center. Okay. Like that. I just realized this, it looks kind of like guacamole with salsa, which I think is really funny. So we're going to take some of those juices from the watermelon and drizzle them all around. And then I like to garnish this with, you can do it with a variety of things, honestly. Uh, I like a lot of olive oil on mine, so I'm just gonna kind of drizzle the whole thing with a generous amount of olive oil. I like pomegranate molasses, so I'm gonna hit it with a little bit more of that. I like to add some more of the nigella. And then we have some sumac from our friends at Z and Z, uh, who are also sourcing uh, their sumac and their zatar from Palestine. So they're amazing. If you don't know about them, you should definitely check them out. Um, they are local from the DC area as well, uh, and they're doing great things. So we source all of our sumac and our zatar from them. And then I'm just gonna hit it with a little bit of sumac on top. And I love to finish this off some fresh mint. I like larger pieces, so typically I'll just tear them with my fingers rather than chopping it up. Go, tear it. And then I'll try to come over to the camera to give you a closer look. Like I said, this is great for any time of the day. Serve it with a side of pita, your favorite cheese. I recommend a kawi or a nabulsi. You could also throw some zatar on this. There we go, I'm gonna come around, try to give you guys a peek. You can see that without. That is gorgeous. <laughs> Absolutely stunning, Marcel. Thank you so much for that up close shot. Anyone who is watching, your donation equals all of these recipes. You couldn't get these recipes for a don for the amount of money that you're going to give otherwise. So please, and in addition to that, you are feeding people who live with food insecurity in Gaza. Let me join on the screen again, Marcel. Beautiful, beautiful demonstration. So cool and different. You and Layla totally need your own food shows. I was like, my wheels were turning as I was watching. No one else can see this, but I can see our backstage. And I was watching Layla and Noor, who's coming next, watching attentively as you were yeah. just dressing this gorgeous, yeah. colorful, fresh, healthy 
flavorful dish, I'll say uh, Friday night, I actually got the chance to see Marcel in person briefly and to order uh, their famous Msachen rotisserie chicken, the French onion lebne, the Aleppo spice cukes. Uh, Marcel threw in this variety of pickled vegetables, green beans, zucchini, carrots. It was absolutely delicious. Anyone in the DC area should check out Shababi Kitchen. It's takeout or uh, delivery only. I think if you're in a, the radius of the Alexandria yeah. area, we're so grateful. And not only have you been feeding us through this venture, which I think started during COVID, right? Just in January. Yeah, um, Marcel right. has famously uh, been the executive chef at several Michelin starred restaurants. And you just bring this amazing blend of, you know, kind of this traditional um, training, I think that you mentioned this like French tradition, whatever else, please forgive me as I'm not an expert then, but bringing okay. your Palestinian heritage into that. We hope to see more of you through um, you. our platform, Layla as well. I want to keep you around for a little Q and A afterwards. Happy. Check out the comments while, uh, while you wait because people are freaking out about how wonderful <laughs> your dishes cool. are. Thank you, thank, thank you, you, thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, no, it's my absolute pleasure and honor to have you on here. And thank you for also sharing a bit of your personal history. Um, it's it's very, very cool. But without further ado, we want to move on to the sweets portion of today's um, event. So Marcel, I'm going to pull you off screen. And I'm bringing with me a dear friend who I've actually known since high school. We went to university together. My my dear Noor Saif of Because Baking. Welcome, Noor. Thank you so much, Leila. It's so nice to be here. Um, I just wanted to say that the food they made was just so good. Marcel, though, that dip looked amazing in those drinks. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try Leila's recipes one day. I know. I want to try them too. She's always been an inspiration for me. I'm actually gonna switch off on the screen so people can see you better. Putting you over on the left because I don't want to block the shot. I see some of our mutual friends in the chat showing you some love, Noor. I see Abdul Hadi saying, "Yay, Noor," <laughs> and all kinds of other people from the community. You are cel you are a celebrated baker. I've had the benefit of eating your cakes and various desserts. Noor is also famous for her cheesecakes and her batlewe. Um, tell me some of the other dishes, Noor. I don't want to forget. No, no, it's okay. So I make a lot of cakes. I make, um, I like to make Middle Eastern desserts that are a little different. So I have um, knafe cheesecake. Um, I make balawa cheesecake, pistachio cheesecake, and now I'm making Aisha Saraya cheesecake. So it's oh, wow. most of the, the Arabi, the famous Arabi desserts or the Middle Eastern desserts that I love to eat, um, but in a, in a form of a cheesecake. And, and delicious and they're just as beautiful as they are delicious you have to check out her platform hopefully someone can drop the link in the chat so you can see her gorgeous creations mm -hmm. and you know Noor you grew up in the Middle East right where did you grow up exactly yes so I was born in Kuwait and then I grew up in Amman I lived in Oman for a little bit and then all over the place and then I moved here back in 2013 when I actually met you um, but yeah that's why I always like to make my desserts um, to to bring back some a little bit of like a piece of home. Um, so when you tr when you eat the desserts, you feel like you're back home in Palestine or in Amman or Lebanon, like you know the the you know back yeah, home. Yeah, all the traditional flavors. Mm -hmm. of, and for exactly. those of us who don't get to go over to the Middle East, this is a right. way of kind of continuing our connection with our heritage through food, which all of those, especially from Mama's Palestinian Kitchen, of course, embrace as they're all foodies. I just want to shout out again, Mama's Palestinian Kitchen, because it is the most incredible coming together of people. It's also a group that started during COVID by our friend Abbas and his fellow admins, co-admins. And it's brought together Palestinians of all backgrounds, all religions, all, all kinds of, um, I don't know, identities. And it's just a really unique way. And I love that food can bring people together like that. So Noor, I know you have before us something there. I think I know what it is. Can you tell everybody else what it is and what you'll be doing? Yeah, sure. So when, when you ask for a dessert, there, I make so many desserts, but Ramadan always brings um, a taif to mind. It's for me, Ramadan is the only, the only time to eat, to eat a taif, you know, everything. Yeah. All of the all of the desserts you can eat any time of the year except for for atayif. and I still don't know why, but this is the only time I get to eat atayif, so I wanted to make something that's only for Ramadan, you know. Um, I, know I love atayif not only because it's 
it's very fresh and people cook it differently. Some people make the dough different, some people stuff it differently. But I always, um, every time I make a taif, I remember being back home, like back when I was little, we would always go around iftar time to go to the makhbaz or to the bakery to pick up some fresh uh, a taif and me and my sisters would always stuff them together and cook, cook them together with my mom, obviously. That's beautiful. Um, so you got like the shell, basically like the pancake shell from right. the market. So I just wanted to save time so I don't have to make everybody wait until the I make the dough or, or the or the batter and then make the otter and the stuffing and all that. I have everything ready. I'm just going to assemble it. And of course, those who donate will be able to get the, the recipe for those great atayif. So this is what atayif looks like for those who don't know. I prepped the dough or the 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 um, I prepped the batter. I let it set for about 30 minutes and then I baked it or cooked it over um, a griddle. And then um, I usually make them small or about this this small when I'm making asafiri, we call them asafiri if you want to stuff them with ishta. Um, you make them a little bigger if you're, if you're stuffing them with nuts or with um, with cheese. Today I'm stuffing them with ishta and I chose ishta because that's my favorite because I make the ishta from scratch and I always like to incorporate uh, mastic, I like to incorporate uh, blossom water, rose water, all of these flavors that are very strong and very, very good. So I just want to show you how I fold these. I mean, I'm pretty totally. sure. Yes. I'm going to zoom in on you. I'll still be here with you, but I'm going to zoom in so people have a good visual. Sure. So this is basically what they look like. I made them smaller for this type of atayif. So if, if you make them bigger, you can just keep it big, but cut each one in half and then just fold it this way. I would fold it like that and leave the tip open. And that's how you basically just fold it. I'm going to fold one more. You use something to make it stick, or do the does the, the dough, dough just naturally the stick? Dough is, the dough is perfect. That's how you know the dough is good because sometimes if the dough doesn't stick, it means it's it's too dry. So that's why you want to make sure you have the good recipe for it. Which of and course, don't get dough, if you donate, <laughs> make sure you don't need to get the recipe for this supplier. Um So I did prep my ishta. Um, beforehand, I always recommend if you're planning on making your own ishta to make it the night before. It's always good to have it cold and it makes it also a little um, thicker so it doesn't run. So I usually, you can you totally use your spoon, but I like to, let me start from here. I like to use a pipe. Cake yeah. make, so you're always gonna be piping it. <laughs> it's, it's just easier and cleaner. Look, it just it doesn't go anywhere. It just goes inside and it, you make sure you're just getting enough and you're not making the plate dirty because, you know, presentation is very important. Absolutely. Noor, if you don't have a piping bag, could you use a Ziploc bag and cut a very small you tip? Could definitely use a Ziploc bag. You could just use your spoon too. Um, but any bag really, the, the big Ziploc or the small Ziploc bag works. Um, a spoon works. But I just like to use the piping bag because it makes life easier and less messy. I'm going to clean people up the screen so people can see more. Okay. Some people usually, or some people like to just stuff it with regular uh, ishta or cream that you just buy the can, the ready-made. You could do that too. Um, or you could also mix the the can with your own, with your homemade ishta. And um, it will also be very good. And there you have, I don't know if you can, can you see them? Yes, it looks perfect. Yeah, and then you just stop them with some pistachios and be generous with the pistachios. You some people have, have a little bit of crunch. Before. Yes. And the great thing about atayif is that you once you have the dough, you can really fill it with anything. Some people like to fill it with um, biscoff, um, Nutella, anything really. But I like to stick to traditional more. Here. And if you know me, you know I like to top everything with rose petals. So I have these rose petals, which you can buy at the Middle Eastern stores. And I just. And for anyone who's watching who doesn't come from a Palestinian or Arab background, uh, there is such a thing as edible rose petals. And they're often used to decorate Middle Eastern, especially Arab and Palestinian desserts. It's kind of a classic trait of Noor's dishes and it just makes it all look like art. 
<laughs> so let me bring this. We're gonna up. need one um, up close demo. Can you kind of give us a, a close up on one of them? Here you oh, go. wow. That is and, lovely. And then of course you just tap it with otter or simple syrup. Um, you just drizzle it on it and, and then you're ready to eat it. And that's it. <laughs> Noor, that was so beautiful, so sweet, just like Thanks, you. Maria. I'm so glad that you agreed to join us today and to show us your well, creation. Thank you for having me. I'm so thank excited. You so much. Thank you. Yeah, it's so fun to collaborate with you in this way. And um, I hope anyone who's watching who has Instagram will follow Noor at Because Baking. Her uh, whole grid is is a feast for the eyes. It's so beautiful. Sometimes she'll show you the behind the scenes of how she decorates her cakes. I know she's pretty booked throughout Ramadan. She takes pre-orders for desserts. A lot of people like to order her desserts to put on their table or to share if they're having small gatherings now during COVID. And also as just a present or a gift for someone's birthday. My friend Isra, who I know is in the chat, nor am I a dear mutual friend, always makes sure that she orders from Noor for a birthday. And that's how I was first introduced to her creations. And so if you want the recipe, even if you know how to make atayef, you haven't tried Noor's atayef, you probably need to make a donation so you can get her recipes along with Marcel's recipes and Leila Haddad's incredible uh, creative drinks, the various lemonades and other things that she came up with her son. I'd like to, for just a few minute, minutes, excuse me, bring our chefs back on so that we can answer any questions or just for you to all kind of comment with each other. I'm sure you all have so much to say based on what you saw. So I'm gonna bring you back up, um, Leila Haddad and Chef Marcel. Welcome everyone back to the screen and thank you for your beautiful, beautiful demonstrations. I think I have Layla on mute. I'm gonna unmute yeah. you. I bet um, you the family wishes they could do that to me also. <laughs> <laughs> Layla doesn't <laughs> just deliver. Layla doesn't just deliver <laughs> recipes, she delivers up jokes. You are so hilarious. <laughs> I've also benefited from going to Layla's um, so this is a gather for Gaza. This is a virtual gathering for Gaza. Obviously it's, obviously it's not iftar. We wanted to make sure that we had this event early in the day because later on those who are fasting need to be able to spend time breaking their fast with their family or whoever they spend time with. So we did this in the afternoon also so that our sisters and brothers in um, in Gaza and across Palestine could tune in if they wanted to post uh, iftar. So I think we have people from all over the world right now watching. I wanna invite anyone who is here um, to add questions in the comments, we can see them. We'd love to be able to address them. Or if you just have something that you want to say to the chefs, um, I do see someone named Sandy Bintelbira said, thank you to all the chefs for participating. And the fact that you're willing to lend your talents to this and to be able to you know, help provide food <laughs> for refugees, it's such a generous um, act for you to just share that ability. And so maybe if each one of you, before we get any questions, can tell us a little bit more about kind of why this cause is important to you or why you think other people should be donating. And then we'll bring it back on before we end today's segment, my my colleagues, Hani and Bainu Adna Bass, so they can tell you a little bit more about what you might be able to gain from your donations beyond the recipes. So Layla, do you want to kind of tell us a little bit more? You touched on the fact that you're from Gaza and that your husband also went to UNRWA schools. Can you tell us a little bit more about your personal connection? Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. Saha. Um, um, so, um, yeah, so, so um, like, I'm sorry. Like Noor, I was born in Kuwait myself um, and was mainly lived in the Gulf and then would travel to Gaza every summer or winter with my parents. Uh, to visit friends and family and so forth. And, um, you know, that shaped my, my experience, um, you know, growing up. I eventually came to the U.S. in college where I met my husband, uh, Yassine. Yassine uh, actually grew up in an honor camp in um, Lebanon, in Lebanon, um, and then ultimately came here as well for high school and college on a, on a scholarship. And so, um, you know, he likes to do his part. We both do, obviously, to give back to Iowa and to ensure that other Palestinians um, who are still either there or continue to receive services from UNRWA, you know, are given the same kinds of opportunities that he was. Um, and so, yeah, so that's our connection. Uh, my brother lives in Northern Virginia. We like to participate 
every year, you know, when, when it was happening in the Gaza 5K and do everything you can to amplify, you know, UNRWA and, um, you know, Palestinian voices in, in general. Um, and yeah, and my, for me, the, the, the kitchen and, and food, you know, I'm a journalist. I started off just doing hard news, but um, my entry to the kitchen was just another way to be able to highlight um, the Palestinian experience sort of uh, through a different way. And, um, you know, my work tends to be at the junction between food and, uh, and politics. So I see them as sort of um, intimately connected. And um, and so, yeah, it's, for me, it's a way, it's sort of a way to be able to tell that story. Yeah. Thank you so much, Layla, for sharing that. Thank you for all that your family has done, both through hosting your own Gather for Gazas, which you've invited me to. It was an honor for me to be able to be before your community and talk about our work. And also with the Gaza 5K, which I was going to save for later, but I do want to give it a quick plug. The Gaza 5K is still happening, but it is now virtual. And so you might be able to see activities like this as part of that. I'm going to throw the flyer up on the screen real quick. Take note, it is happening on June 12, 2021, which is just shy of two months from now. And Gaza5k.org is how you can sign up or donate. This is a fundraiser for mental health. It is so important to be also caring for the mental health needs of children in Gaza alongside the food needs. So as we said earlier in the program, this is uh, a fundraiser to provide food assistance, owner of food assistance. I also wanna show you all what it looks like, that food assistance package. This is um, one of the photos that I have that includes oil, um, uh, powdered milk, rice, sugar, lentils, um, and chickpeas. These are some of the staples that UNRWA provides families. And Hanny, my colleague, will tell you a little bit more about what that means and how much of your donation provides that. Marcel, Noor, I don't know if you wanted to share anything before we kind of close out our program and, and switch a little bit to our fundraising segment and see what the update is on donations that have come through. Of course, the stage is yours if there's anything you wanted to share. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think work like this and especially from creatives in the culinary space like us, it's so important. You know, I think that there is a monolithic view of uh, a lot of people um, from a Western eye, and there are a lot of complexities, you know, throughout the region that we all come from. And I think we're just giving everyone a better understanding of what that means, you know, and raising awareness and kind of just owning what's ours and uh, putting that on the forefront. So much has been, um, I don't know, put out there by people that aren't rooted in these traditions and these foods and these ways and it's just i think really our time to tell our stories and i think that's so important especially in the realm of raising awareness um as far as the fundraiser is concerned you know for those that are connected to these things that we do from this privileged perspective and what we can do to give back i am i muted no i'm not muted i was just gonna say mic drop marcel <laughs> Beautifully stated. Thank you for that contribution. And um, I'm just so thrilled about how this has worked out. We've never done something like this before. And, you know, Mama's Palestinian Kitchen was the perfect platform, the perfect group for us to partner with. And each of you, you know, culinary artists. I know, Layla, you generally don't go by chef, although you are a chef to me. You are so many things. And so I've been calling everyone a culinary artist because I didn't, I didn't know what better way to kind of describe you collectively. <laughs> Oh, I think you're muted. Hold on, because I think you're saying something. Go ahead. Nothing. I said, no, that's that's fine, because I don't know how to stop myself. Like, what do you do? I really don't know what I do. I, I do something, but. You do so much. <laughs> you yeah. have so many identities from, you know, mom to journalist to just, you know, cookbook author. I know I see in the back of your kitchen, the Gaza kitchen. I think that's yeah, the second yeah. edition of the book, right? It's coming out, yeah, the, the latest one, you know, the, the press is all stopped during COVID, but the, the newest one is coming out in June. So definitely- Oh, great. Everyone who's watching, yeah. Excellent, that's so cool. Noor, is there anything you wanted to share before we move on? I just wanted to say thank you so much for having us and including me in this uh, event. And it is very important to, uh, just like Marcel and Leila said, it's important to always raise awareness for people who don't know what, what's happening. Um, we're all responsible to do something um, for the cause and every little penny counts. So even um, it, this is fun and it's, it's really nice to be here, nice to get um, to be part of this. But at the same time, don't forget the purpose of this event is to hopefully be able to help uh, those families in need and um, to do something, uh, especially this month in Ramadan when it's 
uh, when it's very valuable. So thank you again for having me and I'm honored to be here. Thank you so much. Thank you for your generous words and your generosity of spirit. We hope that everyone takes the spirit of Ramadan, whether you're Muslim or not. I happen to come from a Christian background, but this is such an important time to kind of take the spirit of this month, the self-reflection and the self-awareness and and be generous with your giving and, and kind of um, share your privilege, like Marcel was saying, and your blessings with other people. Thank you to Leila, Marcel, and Noor for the incredible food demonstrations. Anyone who's watching the read broadcast, if you donate, you will get these recipes. Hopefully you do it by today. I don't know if there's limitations. Let's bring on Hanny, Abbas, and Venu to dig into that. I'm going to take our chefs off screen. Thank you again for your, Thank you. Um, for your time today. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Hanny, Venu, uh, Bass, welcome. What did you think of that? I can't wait for Iftar, and I know Abbas is going to post something in the community. Yeah, is it meant up today, Abbas, for you? <laughs> um, probably, yes. We haven't, we didn't do Mensaf yet, so probably, or something right. similar. <laughs> Make sure to send me your location, please. Absolutely. Uh, uh, Ahlaw, sahla, ay wakit, Habibi, all of you. Great. Uh, very quick. Uh, thank you for the chefs and for Layla. And, you know, I just want to reemphasize this. Nor said it this. This is about making sure families does uh, they get the food they need. $50 provides food for a family. Five in Gaza, three, three months, $50. So this is something that unique about UNRWA, that the food assistance program is year-round like for the whole month. And it's throughout the year, more than a million, more than a million persons in Gaza benefits from the food assistance. So your generosity will help people in Ramadan and beyond. So please consider being generous. The great thing about this food assistance program, it is the cat certified. I get this, the Mufti of Laksa and the Mufti of al both of them support it and they certified it's the cat program. Not only that, to the extent that everything UNRWA does and everything UNRWA and everyone UNRWA helps is the CAT certified. So this is a great opportunity for you to make a gift. We are 40 percent, 30% maybe to our target now, Zeno. You know, where do we stand, Zeno, you know, on the fundraising? I mean, wow. We have already raised $3,828. So thank you to all. Um, we're, we're really getting close to our $15,000 goal and this page will keep going. I just want to add, um, you know, Layla, first of all, the drinks, um, and you know, I'm a vegetarian, but I'm going to be definitely visiting Shabawi chicken and I'm sure there are going to be some really cool, um, you know, vegetarian options for me. And actually what a coincidence. I actually tried a tie up for the first time yesterday. Um, and it just, it was so good and I can't wait to have more. Um, but yeah, we, we are at $3,800 out of our $15,000 goal. We're really getting there. Um, the, the donations are coming in and I have you, the donors and the people have joined to thank for that. So it's, it's you know, can we kick it up a notch? What can we offer people? What are they getting? Anybody who gives a donation will automatically receive these and basic donations. So uh, we can do those. What, what can we do? This is the month of generosity. How can we up it? You know what I'm about. I'm about taking it up a notch. So, you know, we're definitely going to do that. So first of all, I'm going to offer the first, and already the people who have done this are going to get this, but for the next 20 people who donate $50 or more, do you see this cool t-shirt that I'm wearing? The cool t-shirt that Layla, our host, is also wearing? You're going to get one of those for the first next 20 people on top of everyone else has already donated $50 or more. Donate now, and it's going to keep going. And if you do, you'll get to wear this really cool T-shirt. It's super comfy. The designs are super cool. And I want to see everyone rocking that T-shirt. So make your donations now to our page. You see the link right there. Layla is sharing our, our screenshot right now. We're $3,881 raised. It's quite incredible that we're able to do that in, in less than an hour. It's amazing. Um, but I am going to take it up a notch a little bit more, Hanny, if that's okay with you. Sure, we're yes, it's Sunday. We have nowhere to go. Go for it. Oh, yeah. So we're offering the first 10 monthly donors. Our sustainers in solidarity are the backbone to UNRWA USA operations. You are the ones that are helping us provide consistent operate consistent assistance to people that need it. Um, and in this time of Ramadan, Palestine refugees need it more. And so if you become a monthly donor, 
you get this really cool pink kefir. I uh, Abbas, you gotta love this. There's a kefir involved. Abbas is there. What do you think? Oh. What do you have to tell to your people? That's amazing. Um, well, first of all, I just want to uh, reiterate and thank um, both Layla's. Layla, you're amazing too. You're doing a great job here. Um, we have to acknowledge that. Um, Layla Al Haddad, always amazing. We we had the privilege of having her in Florida for our loudest conference one time, so she's no stranger to us. Uh, Marcel, excellent. I mean, I, I just I just love what you did there, and I loved your uh, your message explaining how important it is for um, for us to own to own our cause because I'm a big. Uh, um, emphasizer on that, you know, um, always trying to remind people that we need to own our cause and uh, Noor Safe as well. That's amazing. I'm a big, big, big fan of Kataif. Um, so, <laughs> Hani's smirking over there. He knows. So, you're like an Apple guy. <laughs> exactly. So, um, you know, I just want to reiterate um, all of you and everybody on to um, uh, just. This was really amazing, and I agree with uh, my colleague here, Layla, of, of how smooth and, and nice this went. Um, but in order for it to be fruitful, um, I think we have to achieve our goal, you know, and I think that's um, very important um, for us, and not just us, for everybody to feel great about this event today. Um, and, and this is the first time I do something virtual as well, Layla. So. I, th I think this is this is amazing. COVID has taught us to overcome, to adapt, to improvise, you know, and, and just like and our not, Palestinian sisters and brothers too, right? Absolutely, right. And mm -hmm. and I think the the primary example we have in Palestine, and I say this wholeheartedly, and I don't want to sound biased, but our people in Gaza, you know, and when most Palestinians when they say Gaza, there's meaning to that. You know, we say Gaza al Ma'azza, right? So we, we hold the, the people in Gaza dear to our hearts because of their steadfastness, because of um, you know everything they do to maintain our struggle, to maintain our voice. For us, um, some of us you know cannot visit Palestine, so they're really our voices. And of course, Palestinians all across Palestine, but the people of Gaza really have a special place in my heart and all of our hearts. And I think um, through UNRWA USA. Um, we have a safe platform to donate to the Palestinian people without worry. Um, and, and I think it's important to, you know, especially like some of the speakers and um, Nur has mentioned earlier, um, especially because it's it's the holy month of Ramadan, you know, and we need to dig into our hearts and, and dig into our pockets because this is a time where our people need us. Um, so many people reach out to me. They inbox me. They message me. Abbas, I want to donate to Gaza. How do I donate to Gaza? Okay. And I tell you right now, for those that are watching and that will be watching um, down the road uh, when this gets redistributed throughout um, social media, is this is this is the time. That you've asked, how can I donate to Gaza, the people of Gaza who need us, you know, and, and this is the platform that you can do it safely. Okay. We have professionals out here. Um, they know what they're doing. Uh, UNRWA has been defunded by, uh, I don't even like to call him president, but former President Trump, right? Um, he, he defunded UNRWA for three years. Am I right, Leila and Hani? Yeah, taking away $360 million in annual funding. It's been a, a significant impact that's crippled the agency in many ways, and which I might add, 90% of the people who work for UNRWA are refugees themselves locally recruited from the refugee population. So the people working in the food distribution center who you'll be supporting, giving the food to the families who qualify, they're also refugees and it's providing them jobs and livelihoods. So yeah, it's such an empowering leader. program. Amazing, yes. So that's why it's important. And for me, as an advocate for the right of return for Palestinian refugees, I mean, uh, championing the Palestinian right of return movement. I mean, that, that's what I live for, um, for the Palestinian refugees. I mean, without the Palestinian refugees, we would have no cause. Let, let's be honest here. You know, our cause is a cause of refugees. Okay. Honor was helping Palestinian refugees. So dig into your pockets 
and donate, donate, donate. <laughs> Thank you, Abbas. This is great. This is wonderful. This is very kind of you. And I, I want to remind people that you know there is swag for giving, but I know this is the month of generosity. So if you're not comfortable to give, uh, there's a Facebook fundraiser for us. There's a PayPal. We're in Lunch Good. We're in our website. So always go to underwayus.org. <laughs> Call us. You know, and we want to make sure we deliver this these food packages to families. I tell you, it means a lot to folks in Gaza when they receive that food assistance. You know, some kids go hungry. I'm not being dramatic here. Some people don't have so food insecure that they just, they get excited every quarter. When Lord says, okay, now you could collect your food assistance. People get energized and they know that if Lord was said something, it's always going to be delivered. And that's a great thing about our community. You've seen we celebrated food just now. You know how important it is in our culture. Bino, can you reiterate these uh, swag again for people for the benefits of everyone at home? Yeah, let's let's do it. And first of all, Abbas, thanks for your message. I mean, everything you said is literally what drove me to this cause and to be a part of such an incredible organization. So, you know, Thank I really you, I want to power that through. We're at over four thousand dollars raised. I mean, this is this is amazing, and it's yes, it's yes. only getting stronger. And again, like I said, you make a fifty dollar or more donation, and you get this T-shirt that I'm wearing. And I'm telling you, it's really, really. Are we doing amazing. this until midnight? We're doing this until midnight. midnight. Yeah. Do this. It's, this is going on till midnight. I will be up until. I want midnight. mine. Don't forget. Yeah, yeah. No, I will be up until midnight, and I'll be watching that page, and I'll make sure. And if you make that donation, you'll be getting a T-shirt delivered straight to your door. And, if and, you and remind us, remind us, if we don't send you one because you might be using a link or something like that, flag it to us, and we will deliver on this promise of the T-shirt. Absolutely. And the cafe, yes, the pink cafe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're a monthly donor, you become a new monthly donor, and this is at any amount. You get this pink cafe. I'm sorry, it's being blocked up by logo, but we're good. And this is from the last remaining kafia factory in Palestine, the Herbawi factory. It is this beautiful. I'm telling you, like, I've actually never seen this kafia in, in my time here. I was like, I love it. And so if you really want one, become a monthly donor. And um, as, as Hanny mentioned, there are many ways to donate. You can donate at the fundraiser that we have right now. You can donate on launch good. You can go to unreusa.org slash zakat. Or if you feel like talking to me on the phone, you can call us at 202-223-3767 and you can donate and then I'll have a conversation with you about anything. And I think that would be really fun. So there are many, many ways to donate and I'm here to you know, help and facilitate that. And we really wanna reach that goal and send the food assistance to the needy families of, of Palestine. So um, you know, if you have any questions, I'm here and I'm gonna be watching that meter until midnight. So um, thank you, thank you all. Like, seriously, this has been- Send it to your uncle. You know, you have uncles, aunts, you know, people with money, just take care about this charity. I hope you support and know that the money will be used for, will be used for food assistance, the cash, tax deductible. If you wanna give us your stocks, you know, you could always donate stocks. I'll stop there and I wanna thank you. Thank you for your generosity, your kindness. And I know that it's not gonna be unnoticed. It's not gonna go unappreciated. So back to you, Leila. You're you're muted, Layla. You're muted. <laughs> Layla, no. can I just give can I just give one quick shout Please, out? Yes. Yeah. Of course, go ahead. But I, I want to give to my co-admins, Faith, Fatin, Sandy, and Subha. A big shout out. They're behind the scenes working on this too. Thank you. We're really grateful to them. Thank you. Thank you. Shout out to them and shout out also to the rest of the Under USA team. Our executive director, Mark Cronenfeld, Harley Doherty, uh, Madhini Kumar and Lori Mosier, they aren't on screen, but they are also in the comments and monitoring. And you know, this is just a small team of people putting on this effort, but we hope that you give us a big return on this because we wanna be able to do as much as possible for refugees. The gentleman here told you all the different ways. If you have questions, you can comment, you can message, you can call us. We're always here to support. Hopefully this will be the first of many collaborations with Mama's Palestinian Kitchen. Thank you to that big, beautiful foodie community. Um, we really have so much fun with you on Facebook. Thank you to our our chefs. Thank you to our colleagues in the Middle East, the refugees who are working for the agency and carrying out this important work to help lift up um, the, our sisters and brothers there and to make life better for them. Every donation counts. Don't be shy. $5, $10, 500 5000 It all adds up. So don't be afraid if you can't make a large contribution because every dollar is accepted and appreciated. The last thing I'll say, because we still have a generous group of people watching, share this video. 
hit share on this video. Make sure other people get this message that they can benefit from the food demos and from the information you learned today. Go to unreusa.org if you need more information as well. And because it is a program I'm super excited about post Ramadan, if you need an opportunity to focus on your wellness, your mental health and exercise, we have a virtual walk run called the Gaza 5K. And that is uh, our signature event that is hosted every single year in cities around the United States. This time it is virtual because of COVID and so that it can be accessible nationwide and across the globe. Go to Gaza5k.org to register. Registration is now open. It, and there is an early bird special. If you use the promo code all caps early bird, you will get $10 off your ticket. This is a really crucial way to continue your uh, support of the UNRWA USA mission and bettering the lives of Palestine refugees. Thank you all for joining us. We are going to sign off for now and let everyone rest up, those who are fasting, before it's time to break their fast. Ramadan Kareem, everyone. We'll see you next time, Ramadan Kareem. Bye, everyone. All right.